Let's talk about the rappers for a minute. Can we talk about the rappers for a moment? Let's talk about Tupac Shakur for a moment. Tupac Shakur is a child of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, born out of the spirit of the revolution of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, fire in his bones. Huh? Boldness and rebellion in his blood. Born from his beautiful, bold Black Panther mama, Afeni. Sitting in the jail cell, a revolutionary woman carrying the fruit of life, mocking the child in her womb, mocking the child with rebellion, mocking the child with insurrection, mocking the child with a spirit to not go along with what's been going on. Everybody out here got cases and a real brain and real thug lives to match these thug records. Shit, they came to me and said, do you want to work with the road? And I said, hell yeah. Now yeah, you show me that on the other side and we could talk. I can't really ask for nothing more than that really in, in 93. Too far. Thug life and death, bro. Now y'all buy my record and support a real nigga because I'm staying real. Made great music together, but tell me what you and Pac's relationship was like. Because as you touched on earlier, you guys are kind of on two different paths when you guys really, really started rocking. Nah, see, when we really started rocking was before Death Row. That's how he got to Death Row. We really started rocking when um <clears throat> and Michael Rappaport was there when I fucking met him at the Poetic Justice Rap Party. Michael Rappaport, my dog. Yeah, Ricky Harris was the fucking like MC or the the host that night. And I grew up with Ricky Harris. That's like my cousin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. So Rest in peace. When I get to the party, Ricky Harris is there, John Singleton, Janet Jackson, all of the stars and shit is there. And they got like a DJ booth and they got like a microphone. So Ricky Harris grabbed the mic and he know I get out. So he like, yeah, I got my my cousin Snoop Rock in the house and whoop, whoop, whoop. And then Pac is right here. So then when Ricky finished saying what he's saying, nigga Pac grabbed the mic and started rapping. I'm like, nigga, that was my intro. <laughs> <laughs> so when he finished saying his little blind, I grabbed the mic and I started rapping. Then he grabbed the mic and started This is one mic, nigga. This is when nigga only had one mic. So nigga had to wait patiently and kindly and didn't grab it with aggression after a nigga finished. Nigga said, so then now we rapping and rapping. So we both go about like four or five times. Then we stopped, and then my nigga Laylaw from above the law was there. And he walked us outside, and he was like, Snoop, did you meet my nigga Pac? I'm like, nah, what's up? Shook the nigga hand, nigga rolled a blunt. I'm like, nigga, what's that? He like, nigga, it's a blunt. The nigga rolled a blunt, licked that motherfucker and lit it, smoked that motherfucker. I'm like, let me get your number, come holla at you. Got his number, maybe like, a month later, I finally called him, and I'm like, what's happening? What's up with you? He like, I'm at the house. I'm frying some shrimp. Nigga, come by. He was in Encino. <laughs> nigga had a house full of niggas. He was frying shrimp. Nigga had flour and shit in his hands. This is the first time I go fuck with him. And the nigga like, you ever seen my movie? I'm like, nah, nigga, you was in a movie? He's like, yeah, nigga, I got a movie called Juice, nigga. I'm like, let me see it, cuz. And nigga gave me a big ass laser disc. That's when laser disc was out, nigga. This motherfucker was a pop. This big nigga was square. He gave me that motherfucker. I took it to the house and I and DOC had a laser disc player too. But that motherfucker in nigga watched juice and fell in love with that nigga. I was like, cut this nigga hard. <laughs> me and all the homies started listening to this nigga music, getting all this shit. Me and them started hanging out, started fucking with him and fucking with him. And then I did. My record, then I did the Murder Was The Case soundtrack. And I wanted this song he had called, uh, Tell Me Did You See Life So Hard On A Nigga Living Like A G. 
I wanted that song bad. And he was like, I paid him $35,000. I made sure gave him $35,000. And Sugar was like, nigga, who is this nigga? We giving $35,000 to this motherfucker ain't shit. I said, man, pay the nigga, man. This nigga the shit. The song is bomb. So Suge paid him. Nigga, we ain't even used the song. <laughs> oh, my mama, we didn't use the song. Because he rapped on the song, but I wanted to rap on the song. And I was like, I was debating whether I wanted to use him. And, me, and it got too late and we didn't use it. But long story short, when he got back out and got on Death Row, I had already paid for it. So I used the song and I did the lyrics over on the the movie that he was on before he died, The Wanted Dead or Alive. What was the name of that movie? And we used it for that, but I had paid the nigga like <laughs> four right. years before that. And this one, Suge wasn't fucking with him. Suge was like, don't get that nigga all that money. I'm like, cuz, he worth it, cuz. So he was my friend before Death Row, uh -huh. right? So building a brotherhood with him. So when he was locked up, Naturally, I spoke to Suge and was like, we need to get Cuz out and put him with us because he will make us better and he going to push me and he's just the shit just because we need his spirit here. So that was the first successful free agency acquisition that I acquired with Suge Knight as like a general manager to bring Cuz to the squad. Only Gab can do it like this. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. So one of the fascinating things about Tupac is his work ethic. People always marvel at the fact Tupac put out about 500 songs. Well, he recorded at least 500 songs that we know about. Well, one of the things that I'm impressed with is how Tupac not only talked about, but had enough common sense to record some of the things that took place in his life, even on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, he talked about when he was younger, how he always kept a journal or, you know, in Tupac interviews, he'd give you a complete rundown of what exactly what was going on at different times in his life. And it comes in handy in situations like this. Snoop Dogg did an interview not too long ago. And in this interview, he talks about how him and Tupac first met, how they became friends, and once again, how he was instrumental in bringing Tupac over to death row. And all of which is probably true. But there's certain things that he talked about in this interview that I'd never heard him talk about before that we heard Tupac already address. Now, in this interview, he did with Matt Barnes and Captain Jack. Snoop Dogg said he was the reason Suge Knight gave Tupac 35 grand for a movie soundtrack before he was on Death Row Records. Now, we heard Tupac say this several times. He said, I used to always see shit. When they did the um, soundtrack for Murder Was The Case, yeah. it was when I was going through all those legal problems. That Suge knew he was going through some legal things, and Suge gave him damn near album budget for one song. And he was like, yo, give me a song, dog." And I was like, yeah, you can get whatever you want. You know, gave him a song. Dug into the bullet, got my strap on the bullet. On the first motherfucker that could outrun a bullet. That he didn't even use. Something like 200000 or 150000 for one lovely. song. <laughs> and the song, they didn't even use it. Now, the problem was, and what Snoop Dogg said, is that it's like Snoop is trying to downplay the situation. Snoop said... It was 35000 that he had to talk Suge into giving Tupac. When Tupac say it was a damn near of an album budget, Pac said it was like two hundred grand, one hundred fifty grand. That's a big difference between, you know, thirty five thousand and two hundred grand. Them numbers way off, 
And then, you know, to make matters worse, Snoop is saying that, you know, he talked Suge into fucking with Pac. Like, basically, Suge wasn't rocking with Pac. I paid him 35000 I made Suge give him 35000 And Suge was like, nigga, who is this nigga? We giving $35,000 to this motherfucker ain't shit. I said, man, pay the nigga, man. This nigga the shit. The song is bomb. So Suge paid him. Nigga, we ain't even used the song. <laughs> oh, my mama, we didn't use the song. But and if you listen to what Tupac said with closely, like, Tupac had already money. turned Suge like, down because he, he said he wasn't ready to come so to death row friend. at that point in time he when they was trying to bro. get him. Uh -huh. right. So, so Suge did that for him and gave him damn near an album budget so when he was for one up, song. Naturally, I spoke to so that means Suge been trying to sign Tupac. He been trying to sign Pac the whole time. Because Whether Snoop Dogg knew it or not. He's going to push me and he's just the shit just because we need his spirit here. So that was the first successful free agency acquisition that I acquired with Suge Knight as like a general manager to bring Cuz to the squad. But if you listen to what Tupac said closely, Tupac had already turned Suge down because he said he wasn't ready to come to death row at, at that point in time when they was trying to get him. So Suge did that for him and gave him damn near an album budget for one song. So that means Suge been trying to sign Tupac. He been trying to sign Pac the whole time. Whether Snoop Dogg knew it or not. He asked me to come to death row and I was like, I ain't ready. And instead of like taking it personal, he just did that for me. And I appreciated that. And let me give a shout out to my homeboy, Brian Graham, man. Because when Snoop Dogg be twisting these facts and, you know, telling these lies, it be driving yo crazy. <laughs> so shout outs to my homie, Brian. This is, this is what Snoop Dogg's saying. He didn't want to give Pac the money. He said, Shook say, fuck that nigga. So it's always like, you know, look at me. I'm important to this situation. That's what I get from that. Snoop Dogg is making this so relevant in that situation alone. Now, you know, was Snoop Dogg the initial connect? Did he probably have a relationship with Tupac before Suge? Probably so. But the problem is that Tupac already spoke about this and he damn sure didn't mention Snoop Dogg. He said Suge gave him the money for a song and they didn't even use it. And it was damn near an album budget. And here's another thing. Snoop Dogg said he met Tupac in 1993 at the Poetic Justice movie release party, right? Well, on this video of Pocket the Gun Range, Tupac said he just signed the death row. They came to him and said, I want to work with you. And he said, not too bad. What more could you ask for in 1993? You know we just signed with death row. That's going to be cool, too. I can't really ask for nothing more than that, really, in 93. So... Either Snoop Dogg took Pac to death row in 93 and everything, you know, was a go from then. And for some reason, it just ain't pop off at that time. Or death row was already, Tupac was already on death row's radar before Snoop Dogg met Tupac at the party. But once again, the story that Snoop Dogg told ain't necessarily adding up with what Tupac already told us. I'm confused. <laughs> it's tricky. Tell me what you guys think. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to sub to the channel. This is Machiavelli Media. I'm your homie Gab. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.